This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, pet lovers. This is Michelle Byrne, your host on Best Pets for Pets. Today, we're going to, well, this show's for the kiddos, you know, and all those kids at heart. We're going to talk to the executive producer of a new TV show that is just, oh, it gets my heart because it's all about pet adoption, well, dog adoption, fostering, you know, all those kind of things. And I'm a big, you know, adopt, don't shop lover, but this show does it so well and it's children focused, which makes it even more special. So stay tuned. We're going to be right back. How many of you have pets? My hand's raised. Now think about how lucky you are to have such a sweet little pet in your life, and that pet is lucky to have you too. But unfortunately, there are countless pets out there that don't have a home to call their own. However, Bob's from Skechers is trying to change that. So we developed Bob's for Dogs and Cats to help pets in need. With every purchase of adorable Bob's footwear or fun, stylish apparel, or even the cutest Bob's pet accessories, Skechers makes a donation to Petco Love to help save shelter pets. And with your help, we've already saved the lives of over 1 million pets and raised over $7 million. So while you're getting style and comfort with features like Skechers' famous memory foam cushioning, you're also helping to save an adorable pet in need and helping another lucky owner be connected with a future best friend and companion because happiness is having a loving pet by your side. Find Bob's at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, select pet co-locations, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. I would like to introduce Andrew Green. He is the creator, executive producer, and showrunner of Puppy Place, which is a new series on Apple TV+. Plus. It's just premiered. And I'm so excited to have Andrew on the show. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. But I always like to know this before we talk about Puppy Place. Are you a pet parent? Yeah, I sure am. Right now, I mean, I've been a pet parent my whole life. Right now, I uh, live with Bruno, who's an 18 and a half year old dachshund, who's been with me the whole time. And I also, uh, believe it or not, I live in a condo in West Hollywood with a 120 pound pig. Oh my gosh, a pig? Yeah, Basil. Basil the pig. He's 11. He's almost 11. He's got some arthritis, but he's a very, very sweet little boy. Big boy. <laughs> so, do you walk Basil? Uh, yeah, I do. Lately, as I said, his left front paw has been a little arthritic. So, you know, he has a doggy door so he can go in and out when he needs to, but we haven't been taking any, any long leisurely strolls of late. Oh, I imagine you could have heads turning on West Hollywood if you were walking. A oh, yeah. He's well known. Actually, people sometimes will stop me in the market. And they're like, how do I know you? And I'll say, I'm the guy with the pig. And they're like, the guy with the pig. So, yeah, he's, he's a, <laughs> okay. a little mini and celebrity in the neighborhood. Maybe Basil should have like a cameo or something or for the next. Oh, don't, don't think I haven't thought about it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I just have to figure out what it is. And, you know, hopefully if his leg gets better, then he can he can do a little more. Right. Right. Exactly. OK, so let's talk about Puppy Place. Congratulations on your new show. And um, Puppy Place is based on. Well, tell us about it, because I know it's based on a Scholastic book series. And I love Scholastic. They have great books for children. But tell yeah. us about how Puppy Place came to be on um, Apple TV Plus. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so I had had a meeting a couple of years ago with one of the executives at Apple, and we were just talking about ideas. And one of the things I brought up, I said, you know, I would love to do a show in the space of animal adoption, you know, specifically dog adoption, because it's something, you know, I'm really passionate about. And I think there's a great children's show here. And um, what I didn't know was that Apple, as fate would have it, Apple was in negotiations with Scholastic for this Puppy Place book series, which they'd been wanting to do something with for years. And it all just sort of came together at the same time. And they told me about the books. And once they got their deal made, uh, they gave me some books to read. And I came in and pitched my version of, 
of it, of what I you know, see the series as. And, you know, everyone was on board and that's how it happened. I've watched the trailer. I think it's just an adorable show. And just in that one minute trailer, there's so many little lessons. Yeah. The goal of the show was always, obviously, you know, there were a few, but, you know, people say, you know, when we were developing it, what's the theme? And it really is, it's about compassion and specifically it's about animal rescue and, you know, all the good it brings both the dog's And the people who do it, and in in our show specifically, Charles and Lizzie, who are, you know, our two leads. Yeah, we don't like to think of it. We think it's entertainment. It's great stories. We don't like to think of it necessarily as a lesson show, but you're 100% right. There are tons of lessons and they're, they're really great and they're really heartwarming and they're close to everyone's heart involved in the project. So that's what's so great. You know, when we were casting, we said, you know, please, if you have animals, tell us about them in your auditions. And a lot of people, you know, we did a lot of our casting over Zoom because obviously we couldn't do things in person during the pandemic. And so people were doing their auditions with their dogs in their arms. And we ended up with a cast full of animal lovers and our crew as well. And um, it just became sort of this big love fest. And, you know, the lessons were just, they just sort of came naturally. You know, I didn't even think about it, but yes, luckily all the people are dog lovers and pet lovers, because if they weren't, that would be kind of tough, right? Yeah. It's sort of hard not to love, you know, specifically, you know, we have so many puppies on the show and older dogs, but, and they're just all such great dogs because we work with, you know, these incredible animal, animal trainers and the dogs are incredible. So it's pretty hard not to love the dogs, but no, you're right. We did have one situation where one of our extras was, I guess he skipped over the part in the contract where it said, you know, must be comfortable with dogs. And he was, oh. he was very afraid of dogs. So uh, he, di- he didn't last very long in the scene. It was in a dog park. It was in the background. It was fine, but it was, but yeah, it's super helpful. I can't really understand that, but, and I have been bitten by my own dog years ago when I was a kid and I'm still not afraid of them. Luckily they're all pet lovers. Okay. Let's talk about the focus of the show. So basically for people that don't know Puppy Plays, Tell us about like, what's the show? You know, you mentioned Lizzie. Sure. So Lizzie and Charles. Lizzie and Charles. When we start the show, Charles is in third grade. Lizzie's his older sister. She's in fifth grade. And they're both, they both love dogs and they don't have a dog. And Lizzie is kind of, she's very bright and she's kind of, um, in the book, she's described as like an encyclopedia of dogs. She knows everything about dogs and they've always wanted a dog. And, um, they finally find themselves in a situation where they might have a dog in their life and they realize that while they love the dog and they would love to have the dog, it might not be the best fit for them. And they find a home for the dog that is a great fit. And that that sort of kicks off the books and the show. And every episode, as with every book, is about a new dog or puppy that comes into their life that needs a home and they find the dog a home. It follows the book series. So just adopting, even altering puppy place to where they adopt a dog and it's the adventures of, you know, one dog that would not be the same show and it wouldn't be as much fun. I right. really like the variety of dogs that you have in because I saw small ones and larger ones. And like you said, there's a few that, you know, mostly puppies, a few that are older. Does that follow the book or is that something you specifically decided we need to have a good variety of dogs? Every book is about a different dog, about okay. a different puppy. And um, we use the books as a foundation, as a jumping off point. The dogs are always uh, the same breed and name as the dogs in the books and their general personality trait, their defining characteristic is the same. And then we build on that. We build out the stories a lot. So, you know, whether it's a pug with separation anxiety or a service dog that might not want to be a service dog. You know, so we follow the books that way, but then we sort of um, expand the world. Okay. You know, people that are listening might say, well, you know, the show might be good if I was going to adopt a dog, but I don't know, or my kid has allergies or something. I think that the show has enormous, and just from the little bit I saw, has an abundance of lessons for children, as I'm sure the book series does. What would you tell people that are, you know, listening, that are thinking, yeah, but I don't, you know, it's about dog adoption. We're not going to do that, blah, blah, blah. So what would you tell them to say, no, you know, there's a lot more. Look, we would love every single person who 
you know, watches the show to adopt a dog. But like you said, there are people who maybe don't want to, maybe are unsure, maybe don't know, maybe aren't in a position to be able to do that now. Uh, we're still telling great stories with, um, you know, and it's about, as I said, it's they're, they're about compassion. They're really fun stories. They're interesting kids. You know, Apple is really dedicated to doing what we like to say, elevated kids programming. It's not, you know, it's not silly sitcom -y stuff with a lot of stereotypes. The kids are real. The kids are interesting. They're multidimensional. And we're telling real, interesting, fun stories. So if you don't want a dog, I think you can still love the show. And I got a lot of messages from friends, you know, when I announced the show premiere and they're like, oh gosh, I saw the trailer. If I show my kid the show, we're going to, he's going to want to adopt a dog. <laughs> or she's going to want to adopt a dog. I'm like, yeah, probably, but you know, it's still worth it. And then listen, it's a great conversation to have them. We also have stories about them. We have characters in the show who, for whatever reason, aren't able to keep a dog or, you know, got the wrong dog for them. And we're always saying, as I think I said earlier, we're always saying it's not just about what's best for us. It's what's best for the dog. So you may love a dog and a dog may love you back and it still might not be the best situation for the dog. And, you know, we're always trying to find the best situation, you know, whatever's going to be best for the dog. And, you know, those ideals that you just mentioned are great lessons for children, like huge you yeah. know, things. And overall, the show is focused on, you know, adoption, which is great for children to learn. And, you know, how great is that for these children to learn that at such an early age and carry that into adulthood? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, I have a question for you, because I know the series was shot during mid pandemic. And as you mentioned, the auditions were done on zoom. What was it like shooting mid pandemic? It was, you know, as anyone who was shooting shows during the pandemic will tell you, it was really difficult. We um, we had a lot of a lot of challenges. There's the old adage, right, in Hollywood, working with children and kids, you know, that it's difficult. And then you add into that a pandemic. So when you're working with in children's television, there are only a certain amount of hours you can work that the kids can work. So add to that the fact that we had much less time in the day to shoot because I think the estimate is like 20% of your time is spent doing, you know, with COVID protocols and cleaning and, and making sure everything's safe, which was super important. It was, it was paramount. I mean, it was the most important thing. So we didn't have a lot of time. Then you throw into that puppies and dogs oh, who, gosh. you know, don't necessarily follow the script and you can't say, Hey, no, 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 no. You're supposed to roll over and bark in that moment. And, you know, look lovingly at this guest actor, the dogs are going to do what the dogs want to do. So, um, you know, there were a lot of, we learned quickly that our stories and our actors and, you know, and our crew had to be really adaptable and make quick decisions and changes on the fly to accommodate the dogs. That said, it certainly added, you know, some levels of you know, stress or whatever. But then the other side of that is you had the dogs there who were giving you kisses and just being so adorable. And no one gets angry at a dog for not doing the right thing because it's a dog, you know, it was all kind of, you know, we'd roll our eyes and we'd be like, oh my goodness, but always with a smile on our faces. You know, as you were saying this, I was just thinking, that's right. You had children, child actors, as you said, limited hours. Then you had dogs on top of that. And I'm sure some, maybe all were trained, but that doesn't mean they're going to do the right thing every single time. And the pandemic, it's like a three whammy and you still persevered and the series came out great. Thank you. Yeah. What was also what we learned and, you know, with a little foresight, we probably would have realized it, but, you know, there's some storylines where you have a dog who doesn't get along with other dogs, let's say, or doesn't get along with a specific dog. Well, you know, you, you throw two puppies together and most of the time they just want to roll all over each other and, and have a good time. So <laughs> that was also, also a challenge whenever you had two dog actors in the scene that had to act with each other. We had one episode where these two dogs were um, that were playing brother and sister. We actually cast a, a brother and sister puppies who couldn't be separated. They were just all over each other. That was easy. That was, I mean, they they brought so much to it. We just had to put them in front of the camera and say go. But uh, anything else, if there's ever any conflict, it's it was it was, it was challenging. So we learned how to uh, write around that. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back and talk about how you selected the dogs. We'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back. Right after we kibble a little with our sponsors. 
guys, Michelle Fern here. I want to tell you about Carlson Pet Products. They're a family-owned, budget-conscious company specializing in creating pet safety products to keep your pet happily protected from puppy through senior years. They have some great products, pet pans, folded elevated beds, crates, and pet gates. Their pet gates fit any size opening in your home. Most gates have a walk-through door for humans and a small door for your pet to go through. I've had a Carlson pet gate in my home for years and absolutely love it. And best of all, you're going to get 25% off and free shipping. Just visit carlsonpetproducts.com and again, you'll get 25% off your order plus free shipping with the promo code PETLIFE. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking to Andrew Green. He is the executive producer, creator, and showrunner of Puppy Place, which is a new series on Apple TV+. Plus. Okay, so Andrew, yes. how did you select the dogs? Because there's such a variety. You have tiny dogs, you have medium dogs. I just saw the trailer, so I'm not sure if you had mixed breeds, purebred dogs. We had everything. And, and all had, sizes. I mean, all uh, sizes, sizes, shapes, all breeds, mixed breeds. As we were talking about, the, the shows were based on a book series. And in each book, there was a specific dog. So our first episode, which was also the first book, is about Goldie, who's a golden retriever puppy. So we had to find a golden retriever puppy. So you were very authentic to yes, the book we series. We always stayed authentic to the breed. When we had a mixed breed dog, you know, there was, there was a little wiggle room as to you know what the mixed breed was but but we tried to stay and we did actually you know for our first 16 episodes we stayed true to the breeds in the book now were they all adopted in real life or were some well what so this is you know the greatest success story of the show is that not all of the dogs and puppies needed homes but every single one that did did need to be adopted that was looking for a home found one and most of the majority of those dogs went to uh, people in our crew, which was amazing because, you know, the dogs, we'd get the dogs probably, the trainers would have the dogs about three weeks before we'd shoot any given episode. So the dogs could rehearse, learn what they had to do, as well as get acclimated and meet the cast, meet the crew, see the sets, be comfortable. And during that time, we all got to meet these dogs and we all got to learn about these dogs and see their personalities. And people would be really interested in, there was always like, there were always like five, I'd say on average, five people on our crew who were interested in any specific dog. Like, oh my gosh, I've, I always wanted a German shepherd puppy or, oh, this tiny dog would be perfect. And he doesn't shed, you know? So there was a line and yeah, I think 11 of our crew members adopted dogs. And then I think three uh, dogs who were sort, we also adopted three dogs out to people who were affiliated with the show, not on the crew. So yeah, it was a huge success. And the um, the big bonus of that was that the dogs would come back. You know, they'd come to work with dad or mom and come visit on set and there'd be a homecoming and it was, it was just great. It's so great to hear. It's so feel good, you know? It really is, yeah. As we mentioned before, there's a wealth of different ideals and so much as far as that is a learning opportunity for the children. But what overall... If you know, would you like the children and their parents to really get after they watch the series? I know the strong message is, you know, adoption and all of that, but what would you like them to really get? I think that this is personal because this is, you know, how I feel, but I think that a lot of people, when they hear rescue, you know, animal rescue, dog rescue, the first thing that comes to your mind is, well, I'm going to do something great for this dog, but I want people to get that it's it's so good for us as well. I mean, ask almost everyone who's adopted a, an animal and they say, it saved my life. Or, it was the greatest thing that happened. It was the greatest gift I could have given myself as well as the greatest gift you're giving this dog. I think it's nutritious, you know, for your soul. It's like eating the right food. It's like doing something that makes you happy. I just think it's such a, a benefit to a kid and a family's life. I think animals should be a part of every family. That's a great way to put it as far as like feeding your soul. I be, they, they give us so much, you know? So much, you know, it's cliche, but they don't ask for anything in return. You know, right. they really don't, except for my pig who needs his belly scratched or else he. he yeah. Or, 
or dogs that give us presents of chewed things, <laughs> but that's our fault. You know, if yeah. you have a, in the trailer, <laughs> the little boy, Charles, right? Yeah. So Charles says, you know, this used to be a dolphin. He has this torn piece of right. something or other. And it's like, yeah, they do that, you know, but hey. Hey, we, we all did that when we were puppies, right? Yeah, all- right. Exactly. You know, I think there's a kind of a, with situations like that. And I don't know how many of those are like spread out the series, but you know, when you adopt and you have to live with whatever you have. I mean, right now I have more cats than dogs and I know your show it's dog face, but when you have cats, they scratch things. So, okay, well, that rug's never going to look the same. The couch is never going to look the same. Oh, well, you know, it's a small sacrifice to make for what they give back to us. I think. Oh, a hundred percent. Most everything that's truly worthwhile comes with some conditions and sacrifices and challenges. Yeah. Okay. Was there a favorite episode? <sighs> favorite for you? Favorite for me. Okay. Well, no, not really, but okay. Yes. There, there's one favorite and it's, it actually has not dropped yet. It's in our second batch of eight. And it's an episode where my own dog, Bruno, who came to work with me every day, who, as I mentioned, is 18 and a half and his back legs don't work very well. And he was kind of the show's mascot. We ended up using him in the episode to play one of the dogs who was in fact an older dog who people did not want to adopt because he was older and had some challenges. So, you know, it was like, it was very emotional for me and it was, um, it was incredible and it was a great way to sort of memorialize my dog. So that was a personal favorite for me because, you know, of that, but I love all the episodes, you know, there's something special in all the episodes, but. Do all the episodes have a different teaching lesson? You know, not, I wouldn't say that it's a different lesson. It's always a different situation, you know, but it's, it always comes back to selflessness and figuring out, you know, knowing that it's not just about a dog needs a home, here's a home. It's, it's the right home and it's the right situation and, and it's what's going to make this dog happy. So, you know, every dog has a different challenge for sure, but in the end, it's, it's pretty much the same message. It's, it's figuring out how to do what's best for the dogs. Because that's, that's what we really care about. Okay. And I also want to point out, because this is a big thing. You mentioned several times that the dog is a good fit. And that's really important because so many dogs are returned to shelters and yeah. cats returned to shelters because, you know, they don't fit right. Or the dog will growl when a little child pulls its toy, which any dog does, you know. So right. that is emphasized though. It sounds like in almost every episode. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, you know, and we certainly don't want to demonize anyone who an animal isn't right for because that doesn't help anyone. And, right. you know, we have a lot of situations in the show where there are dogs who were turned in because it wasn't working and it wasn't, you know, it didn't make the owner happy. It didn't make the dog happy. And, and sometimes those owners end up with, a dog that does make them happy. And I should say pair, I I generally say parents, I don't know why I'm saying owners right now, but you know, again, I'm going back to it again. It's we're we're trying to find the right fit. And yeah, it's something we talk about. And because a dog isn't right for you does not mean that you are not meant to be a dog owner. Exactly. (laughs) Which is, which is why you shouldn't really, unless you're positive gift dogs, Right. And you should do your research and you should learn, you know, hey, this is my situation. I live here and this is what I can do and this is what I can't do. And who's going to be, you know, because there's a great dog for everyone and within any breed. There's a dog for everybody. Yeah, 100 percent. Okay, Andrew, how can people watch Puppy Place? Uh, We are currently streaming our first eight episodes on Apple TV Plus. So um, that's where you'll find it. And there's how many episodes total? We have dropped the first eight. There are eight more that will be dropping in the near future and um, hopefully more after that. I hope so, because this is such a great, from what I saw, the show looks great. The premise of the show is amazing. And I think there's a lot for people to enjoy and be entertained by, but also the message is just powerful. So Thank you. That's what we're going for. And, you know, that's this is just show. such a great show. So thank you for creating Puppy Place where everybody can watch it on Apple TV Plus. And I hope there's many more episodes. So thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you.
You know, one of the things that is so near and dear to my heart is adopting. And I'm big on adopting from rescue places or, you know, shelters or main society, or just even if you're adopting from a person that can no longer care for their dog. So this show is near and dear to my heart because that's their focus. So please take a look at this new show, Puppy Place on Apple TV Plus. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Even if you don't have kids, I think you're going to really enjoy this one. So a huge thank you to my guest, Andrew Green, for telling us all about Puppy Place and creating such a wonderful show. Thanks to my crew, which the only puppy now is Nikki, but we also have the cat crew, which is Dennis, Charlotte, Molly, Jethro, and Sammy. And I don't know, there might be a new puppy in my future. Mr. Z passed about a year ago, so maybe. And thank you to everyone listening. I really hope you go ahead and check out Puppy Place. Thanks to my producer, Mark Winter, for making me and my guests sound amazing. Thanks to everyone listening for making Best Butts for Pets such a popular show. We've been on, oh my gosh, we're on 11 years now. So thank you so much. And hey, keep listening. You never know what we're going to have on Best Bets for Pets. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.